Welcome back. Uh, we've been talking about China-India tension along the border with Victor Gao, Professor Yi Hailin in Beijing, and Professor Nalapat in New Delhi. Uh, gentlemen, just now we're talking about uh, domestic political pressure faced uh, by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, Victor, I want to go to you. Uh, what do you make of Modi's response that is considered um, conciliatory? Well, first of all, I think Prime Minister Modi was telling the truth. There was no incursion by the Chinese military into or beyond the Indian side of the line of actual control uh, or into the Indian territory. That's a very important fact. Now, the second point is that, as a matter of fact, along the China-Indian border in the west section, in the middle section, in the east section, the line of actual control is actually well established. Even though there have been cases, as it is in this particular Gowan Valley, Indian attempts to push into the line of actual control, the Chinese side has protect, protested uh, to the Indian side since the beginning of June about such repeated pushes into the Chinese line of actual control. And what happened on June the 15th was actually the climax of this whole series of events since the beginning of June. And therefore, I think, to uh, restore, to withdraw uh, behind the line of actual control, to avoid any incursion beyond the line of actual control is absolutely necessary for any real chance of peace and stability to happen along the thousands of kilometers of China-Indian border. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Now, top leadership in India or in China should not fall victim into so-called uh, national emotions because it is very easy to manipulate emotions among the people. I think what's very, very important for India as well as for China is stability and peace rather than any agitation for conflict or war because if war breaks out, both China and India will be victims. We will be pushed back in terms of our economic development, in terms of our effort to improve the living standards of the people. And probably only one third party country will glee when escalation and conflicts happen along China-Indian border. This is the time for leaders of both China and India to exercise very firm leadership and to really steer the whole situation in the direction of peace and avoid pushing the situation into an abyss of war and conflict. Well, Professor Ye in Beijing, uh, what do you think of uh, Prime Minister Modi's remarks? And do you think the anti-China sentiment that has been rising, uh, you know, we've seen boycott China hashtag movement online, do you think all these things will change Modi's uh, calculations to perhaps take a tougher stance on China? I don't think that Prime Minister Modi's position will be changed fundamentally, uh, even with this uh, crush uh, under the pressure of the domestic nationalism. But I would like to emphasize the two points. One is that although we have a different understanding on the disputed areas or the location on the direction of the line of control, but this not necessarily means the ministries, the two ministries, will always involve, involve the crush. Actually, there are many, many CBM, the confidence building measures should be taken, adopted and should be taken. Secondly, I think, even though we have some crush, or there's a face of a standoff, that doesn't mean the two nations has a, uh, or two people have the reason to hate each other or to boycott another country's products. Actually, the boycott, the, 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 the foreign products never solve the problem. Actually, they were hurt not only from the exporter, but also the domestic consumers. So I think it's not a good idea to boycott the, the foreign country or foreign people just because of the, some uh, unexpected crush or some event or accident as the very uh, remote areas as the, the dispute, uh, dispute the border. So the two countries, not only the two leaders, but the two people, need has the open mandate and the big heart to live with the dispute areas. We know the, the so-called the, the line of actual control is not an official border and it won't be necessary to be the border in the future. Actually, the line of actual control is a the purpose 
to maintain the stability and the peace, mm -hmm. not to solve the purpose, to solve the, to finally solve the problem. So live with the reality. That's very important things for both the right. two countries, India and China. Uh, Professor Nella Pati, New Delhi, um, can you give us a sense of the popular sentiment over there? How big is the anti-China sentiment, and uh, how do you think that will change the domestic of India's domestic politics, especially its policies towards China? Well, yeah, you know, I, I want to remind you about Mahatma Gandhi, uh, the Indian leader who led the freedom movement. One of his big uh, slogans was Swadeshi, which basically means production at home. And then he, he, he talked about textile, uh, textiles coming from, from Birmingham and Lancashire and saying, you please spin at home, spin cotton at home, and we'll be self-sufficient. There are very strong groups in India. You have the Swadeshi Jagran Manch, a very powerful organization that is calling for uh, all foreign products, actually, to be, uh, you know, stopped uh, in a time-bound manner. So this call that we are talking about is not something that has happened day before yesterday or on the 16th of June. It has been there for, I mean, for about a century in India. Having said that, I want to point out that I think it will be a grave mistake to call it anti-China sentiment. The Chinese people are highly respected in India. And Indians respect the Chinese uh, manner in which you have abolished poverty among hundreds of millions of people. I mean, everyone, everywhere you go, uh, I've seen people who really admire the rapid economic growth that has taken place in China since the 1980s, a period when you and uh, your economy and, 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 and our economy was the same. But today you're five times larger. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think the Chinese people have any problem with the Indian people. I think Bollywood movies are very popular in China. And uh, therefore, I think it is very dangerous for us to talk about anti-India sentiment or in China or anti-China sentiment as though the you know, 2.6 billion people are hating each other. That's not true. This is a very limited uh, kind of sentiment, to limited to certain uh, pr policies, and to, certain, and to certain situations. It does not mean that there is a, a, an anti-China mood in India or, in my view, an anti-India mood in China. All right, uh, let's hope that's the case. Um, you talked about trade, sir. Since 2000, and I will show you this uh, set of statistics, trade between China and India actually has increased from 3 billion U.S. dollars to over 92 billion dollars last year. China is now India's largest trading partner. About 14% of India's imports come from China, with 5.1% of its exports going to China. Now, a Brookings India report released in March estimates that total Chinese investment in India amounts to at least $26 billion. Um, of course, um, can either side, uh, Victor in Beijing, can either side, uh, you know, really afford to alienate each other and let this relationship get worse? Well, first of all, uh, we are now living in a globalized world and both China and India can benefit from more trade uh, between themselves and with the rest of the world uh, uh, compared with less trade. So I think for India to develop uh, as China is still developing, both of us need more trade and we need to defend the globalization and uh, to write off imports and try to withdraw behind a self-erected wall is not a solution for economic development for big countries like China and uh, India. Further, I would say, for the trade volume that you just now uh, mentioned between China and India, given the fact that China has a population of 1.4 1, 1. billion people, India 1.3 billion people, and probably in no time, Indian population will be larger than China's population, uh, the amount of trade, even though very, very large already, is still, for example, smaller than the cross-strait uh, uh, trade volume between mainland China and China's Taiwan province. Can you believe it? So therefore, I think in the normal situation, when China and India really focus on economic development and economic cooperation, our trade volume should probably double, if not triple, the current amount. And that will create more jobs for India and China. That will be really boosting our bilateral economic relations. I'm a big fan for greater China-India friendship and greater China-India cooperation. 
This is the mega trend that we need to promote, and we cannot fall victim into uh, agitations by certain people in either China or mm -hmm. in India or by third country, third party country. And we need to keep that in mind when we look at what happened, unfortunately, along our border or line of actual control. Mm -hmm. And we need to move the situation in the right direction for the fundamental interest of the people of India and for the people of China together. You talk about the third party countries. Um, you know, recently, Jeff Smith, a South Asia expert at the um, Heritage Foundation uh, in Washington, said that the clash between China and India is, quote, going to strengthen India's resolve to treat the U.S. as a partner and strengthen cooperation uh, to better insulate itself against Chinese aggression. Uh, Professor Ye, do you agree? I totally disagree. We respect the long-term traditional Indian foreign doctrine that the protect their sovereignty and uh, their self-determined policy approach. So I don't think the uh, Premier Modi and the Indian government, and even Indian people, will because of this crush and the two states uh, stand aside with America or even join the so-called Indo-Pacific strategy to contain China. It's not an option for India. And I think it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's against the Indian history, culture, and tradition. So I don't think Americans' expression will be fulfilled in the, in the near future. Um, but Professor um, Nalapati in New Delhi, in uh, you know, Washington's 2017 National Security Strategy uh, Review, the Trump administration elevated the Indo-Pacific region to a top-level priority uh, with the aim of, um, you know, as many experts claim, diminishing Chinese influence. Do you think the border disputes played into the hands of the current uh, Trump administration? Well, uh, I'd like to say that I think this border issue is a completely bilateral matter between China and India. And both China and India are countries that don't listen to third countries where their core interests are concerned. And I would like to remind you that Prime Minister Modi at the Shangri-La conference, where both the Chinese and the Americans were present, made it very plain that, yes, we embrace the concept of the Indo-Pacific. It's a concept that does justice to, for example, the importance of India. And we obviously would like would, uh, would embrace it. But we want a free and open Indo-Pacific for all. And Prime Minister Modi stressed for all. And he also stressed it is not to, directed against any country. And, and this was the very important message that Prime Minister Modi gave. So, you know, we have a vision of the Indo-Pacific as free and open to everybody and not directed against anybody. And, and, and Victor is absolutely right. If India and China were to enter into a conflict, well, well, the question of the Asian century will be in doubt, and that would be a global tragedy. Uh, but President Trump, uh, you know, offered to mediate uh, between China and India regarding their border dispute, uh, of course, rejected by both sides. Um, you know, and many believe that um, Washington somehow emboldened India to act uh, more aggressively against Beijing. Uh, do you think that is a myth? Look, I don't believe India acts aggressively. I would like to say that Washington has supplied us with uh, C-130 and our Globemaster and other uh, very large transport aircraft. They have supplied us with uh, 777 uh, artillery howitzers. They have supplied us with Apache attack helicopters, Chinooks, and we are grateful to them for that. Uh, I don't think there is any defense supply from China to India. We are grateful to the Americans for that. Our security cooperation is strong, mm -hmm. and it is getting stronger. But I again repeat, I, the Prime Minister Modi has made it very clear. Look, as Chief Minister, he went to China uh, more than once, and he had some uh, wonderful experiences in China. As Chief Minister, he refused to you know, take any kind of a hostile stand so far as Chinese investment is concerned. So, I mean, the reality of the situation mm -hmm. is that, look, I don't think India is being aggressive. I think China needs to understand right. one thing about India, and so does America. India, China, and America are the, 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 the two all right, sir, I'm afraid that all the time China we have right now. Thank you America, so much. And the third all superpower our is going to be India, in and, and all Beijing, three and are equal. For this edition of The Point. Thank you for watching. I'm Wang Wen in Beijing.